Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial on GCSE Biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of communicable diseases and in particular, human defence systems. I'm Shumana from StudyMind, where we help you revise GCSE Biology with our helpful video tutorials, tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything, and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to tutorial 6 of 9 in which we'll be looking at human defence systems. So in previous tutorials we took a look at examples of viral diseases, bacterial, fungal and protist diseases. So do feel free to go back and recap on that if you would like to before we move on to then look at how our body can protect us against these various types of diseases. So these are our key learning objectives today. So we're going to start off by looking at specific and non-specific defence systems as a whole. So our body protects us against pathogens that enter the body, and this protection can be either A, specific, or B, non-specific. So let's start off with non-specific. So in a non-specific defence system, the same defence mechanism can be used to fight against any type of pathogen, so this is regardless to the specific type of pathogen or the disease it causes. In direct contrast to this, we have specific mechanisms of defence in which the various antibodies produced are specific to each type of disease. So for example, the HIV antibody is going to be specific only for HIV whereas the influenza antibody is going to be specific only for influenza. So this antibody, the influenza antibody, cannot be used to combat HIV infection. So this is why we, re we refer to this type of defence as specific, whereas this non-specific mechanism could perhaps be used to defend against both HIV and influenza. We're going to explore this more later on in this tutorial. So just to recap, in a non-specific defence mechanism, the defence fights against pathogens regardless of the type of pathogen. In contrast, in a specific type of defence, you're going to get a very specific mechanism against a particular pathogen, and these are not interchangeable in between pathogens. So primary defence systems are the first line of defence and are non-specific defences. So they aim to stop entry of pathogens into the body. And these can be used against various different types of pathogen. Remember, it's not specific. So, for example, let's think of the first boundary that a pathogen is going to encounter as it tries to invade the body. Well, one of them is going to be the skin. Then also airway passages. So airway passages are exposed to the external environment in which there are lots and lots of various types of pathogen. So they're going to be another kind of defence system that the body has. In addition, we've got our gastrointestinal system. So when we eat, we're also exposed to various types of pathogen. For example, salmonella bacteria. So our stomach forms another defence system in the body and we refer to these as primary defence systems as they are the first barrier that pathogens encounter. So back to the skin for example. So the skin is a physical defence because it, is, it forms a physical barrier here between the pathogen and the internal environment of the person. And this is because the skin is made up of dead cells with keratin strengthening this barrier, so it's fairly impenetrable. In addition, the skin also forms a chemical barrier. And this is due to secretion of an antimicrobial sebum onto the surface of the skin. So this means that the skin 
forms the primary physical defence by forming this barrier, and it forms a barrier in two different ways. A physical barrier provided by this um, layer of dead skin cells, and then also a chemical barrier. And that's all of that just summarised there for you. So, we've explored the skin as a primary defence barrier. Now let's have a look at airway passages. So these may include structures such as the ear canals, the oral passages, the nasal pass passages and the eyes. So these are all external features of our body that are in very intimate contact with our internal environment as well. And because they're within this intimate contact, they are often expo continually exposed to pathogen. But we have these cells called goblet cells that secrete mucus and mucus acts to trap pathogens and dust. And then we have cells which are ciliated. So they, this means that they have these structures at the top called cilia. And these ciliated cells, well, well the cilia on these ciliated cells acts to waft the bacteria back out of the body. So think of the goblet cells secreting the mucus, which is very sticky and so traps pathogens, and the ciliated cells are sweeping them out. So it's like a really efficient little cleaning mechanism that we have in our airway, in our airway system. Now let's move on to a third example of a primary defence system in the human body. And we're going to use the stomach as an example of this. So the stomach is an acidic environment. So cells in the lining of the stomach secrete gastric acid, which acts to kill pathogens in food. So this is one mechanism of defense. But in addition, there are also enzymes in the stomach, pepsins, that are adapted to work in the acidic conditions of the stomach. So, Remember that there is a difference between the primary defences that we just listed and immunity. These are various different types of defences and you should learn a few examples of each. So we've just given some examples of the primary defences which were the skin, the airway passages and the stomach. So those are your examples of primary defences. Now we're going to move on to the role of the immune system. So the immune system comes into play when the pathogen gets past the first line of defence, so the primary defence. So if the pathogen breaches the skin layer, then we're going to have aspects of the immune system come into play. So we, we refer to these as the secondary defence mechanisms, so phagocytes and lymphocytes. Now I know these are new terms, but we will come on to define what they are. So the immune system is made up of these cells called white blood cells, and they're these ones over here. So white blood cells help protect against infection and foreign pathogens, and there are two types, phagocytes and lymphocytes. So phagocytes make up the majority of the white blood cell population, whereas lymphocytes make up about a quarter. So there's two really key things I want you to take from this slide. First of all, that white blood cells make up the immune system. So this is your white blood cell here. And that there are two main types. You've got your phagocyte and your lymphocyte. So first off, let's have a look at phagocytes. Well, I like to think of phagocytes as the hungry white blood cell because what they do is they engulf and eat pathogens. So they do this in the process of phagocytosis. So this makes it really easy to learn these terms because it's a phagocyte that carries out phagocytosis, which just means that it's going to engulf the pathogen. And it does this by literally Moving around, it will extend these areas of membrane and internalise the pathogen and then degrade it. 
In contrast, lymphocytes, the second type of white blood cell, produce antibodies that fight against pathogens. So for example, it might neutralize um, pathogenic toxins. So let's just take a quick look at the structure of a white blood cell. So they often have these very characteristic lobed nuclei that you can see under a microscope. And then these structures within the cytoplasm are lysozymes and they contain digestive enzymes. And so these can be res responsible for degrading the pathogen, for example. And then they often have these flexible cell membranes, which is really, really important in the process of phagocytosis. Because remember, if a, if a white blood cell is going to engulf a pathogen, it's going to need to be able to morph in order to move around the pathogen. So just to compare and contrast the phagocyte and the lymphocyte response, Note that the phagocyte response forms the first line of defence, whereas the lymphocyte response forms the second line of defence. Also, the phagocyte response is non-specific, so a phagocyte can engulf an HIV virus, but it can also engulf an inf influenza virus, whereas a lymphocyte response has to produce two different types of antibody in order to fight against either the HIV virus or the influenza virus. Also, the phagocyte response involves phagocytes, whereas the lymphocyte re response mainly relies on antibodies which are produced by the lymphocyte. So, phagocytes are your non-specific white blood cell, whereas lymphocytes are your specific white blood cell. So, let's have a closer look at the process of phagocytosis. So, first of all, the phagocyte will detect the pathogen. The phagocyte will then bind to this pathogen and engulf it. And following engulfing of the pathogen, remember those little structures that we saw in the phagocyte earlier, the lysozymes, which contain digestive enzymes? Well, now that the pathogen's been internalised into this kind of physical within the white blood cell itself, within the phagocyte, these lysozymal structures, so these are your lysozymes over here, they're going to fuse with the vesicle and release their digestive enzymes, their lysozymes. Oh, so sorry, this, this is the lysosome and it contains lysozymes, which is your digestive enzymes. And that's going to fuse with this vesicle containing the pathogen which is this purple structure here. And this is going to result in degradation of the pathogen. And this debris is going to need to be excreted because the white blood cell has no use for it. So it will just come out the other side as so. So just to recap, we've got the phagocyte detecting the pathogen which is really crucial because we don't want to be engulfing our own cells. We're really going to be wanting to engulf cells that um, form a threat to us and the phagocyte binds to the pathogen, engulfs the pathogen, lysosomes then fuse with the vesicle containing the pathogen and release their lysozymes into there and this will break down the pathogen and the resultant debris is excreted. So in specific contrast to this we have lymphocytes which are specific white blood cells and they produce antibodies. So how do they do this? Well, lymphocytes bind to antigens, which are protein structures on the surface of the pathogen. So you can see the lymphocyte binding to the antigen on the pathogen. This is going to result in the production of antibodies by the lymphocyte. And in turn, these antibodies, they can induce clumping of pathogens together, which is going to make them less efficient at causing disease. Or the antibodies may bind to toxins produced by the pathogen and neutralise them, therefore stop disease. So just to recap, lymphocytes, like phagocytes, 
they have to detect the pathogen, so lymphocytes do this by binding to antigens on the pathogen surface. They produce antibodies, and it's these antibodies that defend against pathogens. So there's lots of mechanisms that we've been through today, so please do go back and recap, especially the particular um, key points of how phagocytosis occurs and also how the antibody response occurs, because these could be four or five markers that come up in your exam. That's all for today and I'll see you for the next session. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.